Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, number one, uh, uh, anybody who would like to, I, I would certainly like people in our congregation to read the scripture. I know we have one name down, but uh, uh, for uh, if you'd like to uh, read the scripture uh, on a Sunday, there's a sign-up sheet here at the front as you leave today. Uh, oh, there's also one on the table in the foyer. So mm -hmm. please uh, sign up and uh, let us know. Uh, also, uh, annual reports need to be submitted by February the 14th. Also, women, there's a women's Bible uh, circle time uh, meeting uh, for prayer and praise to, to learn to share on. Uh, and uh, share a hot cup of tea together Thursday, February 4th uh, from 1.30 to 3. Also, uh, the LHU, I called up Cordelia, the principal at L.H. Shaw School, and even though we cannot be there physically, uh, they are looking for some assistance with their breakfast program. They deliver the breakfast now to the classroom but if you are interested in helping to provide breakfast for your children, please donate shreddies, plain Cheerios, gluten-free cereal, applesauce, cups, fruit cups, non-peanut granola bars, gluten-free granola bars, and uh, um, uh, please bring the items to the church. Yeah. So it's also peanut or tree nut free. So, uh, you know, that's one little way that we can also uh, be uh, making a difference in our community. So. Um, our responsive reading, I, I don't know if we can make it out, of, uh, so I guess I thought maybe we would just simply read it together rather than responsibly, because I'm not sure if it's dark enough. Or... So let's read this one together, a call to worship. Clap your hands, all you nations, show to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For the God is the King of all the earth. Sing to Him a song of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated in His holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the peoples of the God of Abraham, for the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this song that reminds us of how great and awesome you are. Uh, you are the God of the nations. You are the God to be exalted. And today, Holy Spirit, come into this place and teach us, speak into our hearts through the power that you gave and the power that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. So we continue worship through our songs this morning. God of grace and God of glory.
thousand tongues to sing thy praise. continue this worship service in thanksgiving and praise that can well up inside of us when we connect with a God who is so awesome like you. Uh, you are a God of grace and a God of glory, and uh, you pour out your power on your people. And Father, we thank you for your church uh, and that bears your name. And uh, Father, we thank you for your again for your spirit that is with us. And may you be able to grant us wisdom and courage uh, as we face these days, as we've been through this year, 
and this past year and as we look ahead to the future. Father, I thank you that you remind us both in these songs that not only are you worthy of praise, but that you are present when all things uh, assail us. And Father, that you uh, can set our feet on solid ground. Father, I thank you too that you remind us that uh, whatever storm we go through, Jesus is in the boat. Uh, Father, I can't help but think of uh, Jerry and Kim and their family and, uh, and June's family as they suffer a loss. In some ways it was quite sudden, I understand. And uh, so I pray that your comfort, your grace, your mercy, your peace, your comfort would be with them. Uh, Father, we thank you for too for taking care of Dale and also uh, uh, Jeannie Fagan's husband, uh, Bruce, as well, who's just recuperating from a knee surgery as well. May you just be able to uh, be providing them with the care uh, that they need as they regain their strength and their mobility. Father, we thank you, too, for the opportunity of reaching out to uh, Ellie Shaw School and providing opportunity for us to, to, to help them in their breakfast program for children and uh, ask that you be caring for them. Uh, and that through our gifts we can be a testimony in our community of the love of Christ and uh, the care for our community and that we be an influence in our world. Father, I'm reminded too of, of uh, uh, being out in the cold on Friday night and uh, realize uh, how many people, even here in Nova Scotia, uh, New Brunswick, uh, Newfoundland and Prince Edward Island are sleeping outside due to drug addictions, uh, alcohol, and uh, Father, for this organization that reaches out to them and provides them uh, an opportunity to, uh, to be set free, uh, and uh, Father, through the love of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that your church continues to thrive even in midst of plague times like this. I know that things are changing, uh, and we begin to wonder uh, what church will look like. But I thank you that you remind us when Christ said that he would build his church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. And I'm thankful, Father, that, that you are a God who is incredibly powerful to, to bring in your kingdom here on earth. Father, we just are grateful for the opportunity to be here this morning and, to, and that we have taken from our time to give to you a sacrifice of praise. <coughs> Father, for the needs of each and every one here, uh, as we step into a new week, may you be the God who sustains us, the God who empowers us, the God who lifts us up, the God who pours out such blessings that we return again next week to offer you our thanks as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hmm. Um, I just want to say a quick message uh, besides good morning. Um, about the women's Bible study that started a few years ago and it really grew and we're doing the study on Romans, I believe, and we thought we would just take a little break, start it again, and uh, it's going to be on women in the Bible and it won't be what you expect <laughs> when you come. There's some very strong, very unusual women in the Bible and we're going to have a look at those and how it can really, really relate to us. I mean, really. So it's one for me on Thursday. It's not to conflict with Brian's great Bible study. That's on Tuesday in the Book of John. Um, it is, it's going to be lovely to be with the women together again. So if you want to come, grab a piece of paper in the back and write down your phone number for me in case it snows so I can get a hold of you. So just bring your teacup on Thursday. We'll bring the tea and the coffee. and sit and chat and learn together, so that'll be great. Um, this song is, Oh Lord, You're Beautiful. I prayed about what song to do when you put this on my heart. It wouldn't go away. 
and I thought maybe there's someone who has a need for this, but above all, you always have the need to praise God because when you do, it opens your heart, it lifts your spirits, and it always, always reminds you when you feel alone that you're not alone. You're not alone at all. You are surrounded by angels. You are, God is near you. Jesus can be in your heart if you ask him. You're not alone. So when you open your mouth and you praise him, it opens up everything. So I thought I'd share this really simple song uh, written by Keith Green back in the 70s. Oh, mm-hmm. 
God, I pray that you be here in this building as we praise you, as we do our chores, we praise you. Sick in bed, we praise you. Alone, worried, we praise you. And you will open all doors to bring joy into our lives. And thank you for every single dear person in this room. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Fiona. Uh, it was awesome. Keith Green uh, was an incredible singer in the 70s. I remember him. It was really sad and tragic when him and his little daughter were killed in a plane crash. Uh, just as he was uh, just producing these songs that were powerful back in the 70s. And uh, just before we read Psalm 23, I want to set the, a bit of a context in, in something that we can take Psalm 23 and put a hook on. And this is Elijah. It's taken from 1 Kings chapter 19. And, and Elijah was an incredible prophet. Uh, he's the guy with the J, not the S, right? Elijah. And uh, uh, just before this, he is dealing with 400 Baal prophets. And he's challenged them sort of to a duel. And what he said is, if you're if the God that you you worship is bigger than mine, let's put it to the test. You probably all are familiar with the story how they both had altars built, and and he let the Baal uh, prophets go first. And well, they they and of course the the deal was that. Their God would have to send fire down and consume the altar, and that if he did, and, and Elijah's God didn't, then their God was to be worshipped. And of course, they cried all day, screaming and dancing and cutting themselves. And then finally, uh, Elijah said, I think it's my turn now. And of course, what he did is he dug a trench and he put ton gallons of water over the offering. And then he prayed. And fire came down from heaven, burned up the sacrifice of, of Elijah, but also consumed the uh, altar of Baal and killed all 400 uh, pro Baal prophets. And, of course, King Jezebel got word of this. And he, she said, I promise you that before this night's out, I will have Elijah's life. Now you can imagine, here's a guy who's certainly in touch with a mighty God who does incredible things. He runs for the hills. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. And when he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. And what his servant, of course, was Elisha. Uh, and when he came to Beersheba, uh, um, okay, uh, and while he, was, he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and he ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. So the psalm that we're reading, we don't have that in the book, do we? No, the Bible's opened up to it there. Over there. Okay. Let me read from that. So, Psalm 23 reads, 
I lift up my eyes to you. Haven't we heard that before? To you who sit enthroned in heaven, as the eyes of slaves look to the hand of their master, and the eyes of a female slave look to the hands of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord. By the way, if you're not aware of this, it's whenever you see the word Lord spelled in capital letters, it means that is the name that is very, very sacred. They used to call it uh, Yahweh, because it was so sacred they couldn't even say the name. But it also means I am. And remember when Moses was at the burning bush and he said, who am I going to say is sending me? He said, tell them I am has sent you. So that's that word. So our eyes look to the Lord our God till he shows us his mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy on us. For we have endured no end of contempt. We have endured no end of ridicule from the arrogant, of contempt from the proud. This is the word of the Lord. So, that is a psalm when somebody has had enough. This week I was talking to a friend of mine. They happened to own an apartment building, not probably in the best part uh, of the city, but nonetheless, they take care of it, they maintain it. It's probably the best looking building in the area. And uh, they are single, and they've had some health challenges. And uh, they are responsible, and everything falls on their shoulder uh, to get things done. Uh, and of course, when people don't pay the rent, and when people, uh, uh, things need to be fixed, and things break down. And not only on top of that, if you're single and you run, in, run into health issues, and that is what's happened to this person, this friend of mine, and they are, are facing some of those health issues, and along with the responsibility of the building and tenants, they are feeling overwhelmed on so many levels. And the comment to me the other day as I talked with them on the phone was, I have had enough. I am about ready to throw in the towel. How many of you have felt like that? At some point in time, either with your spouse or your kids or somebody, right? So she is not the only one who has faced challenges. We have problems that we cannot solve, stresses we can't stand, appetites we can't control, tests we can't tolerate, desires we can't contain, hurts we can't uh, uh, hurts we can't heal, fears we can't fight evils we can't eradicate, burdens we can't bear, dilemmas we can't denounce, sickness we cannot satisfy, devils we can't defeat, storms we cannot settle, rivers we can't cross, debts we can't pay, obstacles we can't overcome, pains we can't appease, gates we can't open, mountains we cannot climb. That pretty well covers everything, doesn't it? So, and sometimes we feel like throwing our hands up in the air and saying, Lord, like Elijah, I have had enough. Right? I can't take it no more. And the pressure has pulverized us. I can't take this kind of treatment. I've had enough. I'm trying to, to do it right, but I'm suffering wrong. I've had enough of running scared. How many of you run, have run scared? I've had, had enough. I'm tired of going out full and coming back empty. I'm discouraged. I'm dismayed. I'm depressed. Lord, I can't keep living like this. My fight has faded. My zeal has gone cold. My determination has dwindled. Well, folks, I want to tell you, we are in good company. Not only Elijah, but Moses when he was leading a stubborn people through the wilderness. Jeremiah calling the Israelite community to repentance and nobody listened to him. They would throw him into a cistern and leave him to die. Elijah dealing with the evil Queen Jezebel. Daniel living in a pagan nation and being thrown into a lion's den because he, he happened to believe in a God who could save. David being chased by his father-in-law for years trying to kill him. We are surrounded by a host of saints who suffered as well and probably at some points 
felt like throwing in the towel. You only have to read the Psalms of David to realize there were many of those that were laments. Why is it so hard? And so what are we to do when we have had enough? What does this psalm, psalm teach us? And then remember, these are people who are journeying to Jerusalem. And remember the three feasts we talked about, Passover, Pentecost, the, and the tabernacles. Uh, one that took place in the spring, one took place in the, uh, I'm sorry, one that took, yes, took place in the spring, then 50 days later, Pentecost, and then in the fall of the harvest time. So here it is. This is what this psalm says. Give it to God. Give it to God. In light of his position, remember when I said we look up to the hills? Most times when we were discouraged, we're looking down, but God is calling us to look beyond the mountains and look to the heavens, look to God. And we saw that in Psalm 121. God is the one who is the maker of heaven and earth. He, we said about the wonderful expression that it's not the size of our problems, it's the issue. That's not the issue. It, not the size of our problems, it's the size of our God. Uh, there was a guy who wrote, uh, J.B. Phillips wrote uh, a book called Your God is Too Small. And somehow over the years, we have downsized God so that we can fit him into our pocket. And I now wonder why we feel so challenged. God is a big God. And it's always about remembering that. And... Uh, Equally true and equally confronting is the, is the description of God in Psalm 23. He is the one enthroned in heaven. And you probably learned to say the Lord's Prayer like this. Our Father, who art in heaven. That's taken from the standard English. Better translated, our Father who is in heaven. And this is the idea of the line of this psalm. God is there. The story is told of a preacher. He began his sermon. He said, Tonight I want my subject to be God is love. I have since decided that love is too big of a topic, so I want my subject to be just God is. Then I decided that I do not have time to describe who God is, therefore my subject tonight is just is. I am told that for nearly an hour that uh, th that preacher talked about all about is. Understanding is impacts our praying. The use of the form of is was how God revealed himself to Moses. God said, I am who I am. I am able to meet every need you have. I am able to cross every river. I am able to climb every mountain. I am able to meet every need you have. John in Revelation indicated that the continual worship of God goes like this. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Vinny Savar is a senior vice president with Primerica. I met him when he was 24 years of age, making a substantial amount of money as he sat at my table and talked to me about how money works. I had the privilege of baptizing him at the church that I attended. Vinny has gone on to, just, he has a passion for God that is absolutely incredible. In that cold night, as I kind of shared some of my challenges, Vinny has got a connection with God that's incredible. God speaks to him. There is no doubt. And in the morning when I was freezing cold, I got out of my sleeping bag, came inside his house, got dressed, put on my daughter's uh, ski pants, put on my parka, and sat in his house <laughs> to get warm. Anyway, he came in around 7.30, went upstairs, and then he came downstairs and said, you know, God told me to come and sit down and talk to you. And we talked a little bit about how we get connected with God. And I want to tell you, that's what I long for. That kind of connection with God. That I can honestly say, you are holy. And you are worthy of praise. So 
So how does this revelation and remembrance of God guide my praying or your praying that we take this so seriously that we absolutely pant and long for and want to be in the presence of God as often as possible? And not just as we're walking, but we deliberately... He takes two hours every morning before he even goes into work to commune with God. He's now around 34 years old. Very successful in what he does, but focuses on God full time. Well, let me just say, number one, first, because God is, he is present. Second, the simple use of is also reflects that God is beyond description. I cannot even begin to describe him. Even the words majesty, uh, glory, and honor, uh, the banner, a banner over us, our refuge, our salvation is not enough to describe who he is. And even the greatest theologians cannot communicate God in all of his fullness. We, by faith, must accept simply that he is. And number three, because God is, we know that he is eternal. Because he is, a day does not exist when he is not. I ran across a video this week called The, the Full Circle of Faith. It's a story by Mike Criswell of his journey. This guy has been incredibly challenged Lots of job, living on the street, finding an incredible woman in his life who was a Christian lady from India, only to have her leave three years later as she goes back into Eastern religions. And yet, through all of those years, through all court cases and everything else, he maintains his faith and his trust in God. And what he said was, if what I'm telling you does not come through, then well, don't believe the faith that I claim. But I am telling you, he said, that this is the God who is there for us. And he, he said, he's been through incredible stuff. People said, you are absolutely crazy to hold on to, to your faith like you do. Uh, and to believe that these people, things are going to work out for you. But over the years, he has seen how God has worked in his life and brought him through some of the most difficult challenges that I could imagine when they seemed absolutely... Uh, no possible way. But if you want to see that documentary, it's called Full Circle of Faith, Mike Criswell. Anyway, when things look bad, when it looks like the wrong people are in charge, just remember that God is enthroned in heaven. And in light of that, also our place. Verse 2 indicates our place. What are we to make of the analogy of a servant? That is our place. We are a servant. We are literally a slave. You will be a slave to somebody. Uh, who's the son you got? You're gonna serve somebody. Uh, who's the guy? Who's Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan. Yes, Bob Dylan. You're gonna serve somebody. Who are you gonna serve? And so uh, we are slaves to somebody or something. And so. Uh, he is the one in control, and we are not. We are to look to him with the pr priority and expectation. Not only that, it's in light of our predicament. Elijah was facing not just Baal prophets, but a, an evil queen. David was facing a father-in-law who had gone crazy. Moses was dealing with a stubborn and obstinate people. But in light of the predicaments, in light of our predicaments, the song for the song is scorn and the arrogance of the proud. That's what they're dealing with in this song. The, the arrogance, the arrogant and the proud. And we can only speculate on what specific events were happening for this guy who was writing, or person who was writing the song, or who they were referring to. But there, here is what we do know. They couldn't do anything about it. Have you ever found yourself at a place where you cannot do anything about it? There is nothing, you mean, no matter how much you wring your hands, no matter how much you fret, you cannot change it. And yet we continue to worry and we continue to fret. And yet God is calling us to turn that over and give it to him because he is more than able. And I'm discovering more and more that sometimes the challenges that we go through 
are really God's testing to see how faithful we really are or will we throw in the towel. And that is why we must give all of those concerns and cares to God. Casting all our care on Him, Peter would say, because He cares for us. And at the heart of this psalm is a lesson about prayer. There are so many elements of prayer in this psalm. And in the prayer, we are focusing on God, not our problems. In prayer, we express our helplessness. In prayer, we cry out to God for mercy. In prayer, we, str we struggle. And ultimately, in prayer, we submit to God. My friend who is facing some health issues right now and, and having to deal with all the financial burdens of owning an apartment building and dealing with tenants, has been trying to do it all by themselves, and they are worn out. And it's literally about allowing themselves to reach out to others to help them. And it is something that is so hard for even you here today. For me, too, to share my burden, how can I trust you? Right? And yet, God is calling us to submit, to trust Him, to carry our burden. For what? His favor. God's favor is the undeserved mercy of God. You see, I remember times I try, try to explain what grace and mercy are. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. Mercy is not getting what you do deserve. Grace is getting what you... See, I have it up, right? But mercy is getting... Not getting. Mercy is not getting what you do deserve. We deserve death. God gave His Son so that we would not have to. God put His Son on the cross when we should have been there. <coughs> We get his favor. We get his mercy. I'm not sure we truly, fully understand that. But in light of who we are, and we know how far short we've fallen uh, and come short of the glory of God, and yet in his mercy and grace, there is nothing that you and I can do to live the Christian life other than to put our faith in Christ. But I want you to think about one other detail of God's favor. Though undeserved, God's favor seems to rest on those who seek him. And that's is the messages that I continue to try and preach every Sunday is that you guys would just come to, to continue like I'm doing in my own journey to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength in order that you might love others like God has loved you. And, I, and in doing so, helping us in the relationships that we have with others who are arrogant or proud who cause challenges for us, or as we meet our own times when we feel we've had enough. King Asa's life, the context of this verse reflects this. I'm sorry, let me back it up a little bit. Uh, in 2 Chronicles 6.19 is one of, uh, any, of an incredible verse, and I'll share it with you. I, I love it every time I hear it. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to show himself strong for those whose hearts are, complete, are completely his. Everybody's heard that verse, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. You better read the other two verses that are after it. Then you will call to me, and then pray to me, and I will listen. You will seek me and find me if you seek me with all your heart. So there's a, if you do this, that, you know, if you want something, these are some things you're going to have to do. It just doesn't come because. It comes as a result of your seeking and passionately. I love to draw. I love to paint. I will go online just to learn how to to do portraits, how to do paintings and things like that, because I absolutely love it. Uh, that's the, what God is asking us, to be passionate, to, to seek Him with all our heart. And so, we open ourselves up to the blessing and favor of God by seeking Him. 
seeking his will and obeying him. King Asa's life, the context of this verse reflects this. When he sought God, he received God's favor. When he did not, he lost God's favor. So my question is, I wonder how many times we find ourselves in predicaments or when we feel like throwing a towel because we haven't really spent that time with God. Maybe it's not two hours, but are you, do you deliberately, every day, spend time with God? And one of the things that Vince slapped me on the fingers for, when you pray, do you stop and listen? I'm an A personality. When do I have time to listen? I ask Lucille. Right? And learning to simply sit and be still and listen. Turn off all the activities that your mind is going on and just simply be still and just listen to your heart. Oh, that's girly stuff. <laughs> Believe me, man. Moses did it. It was no girly thing. Right? He listened to God. We need to do the same. And I'm trying to learn that in my own journey of faith. And how long, how long do we do this? Forever. Forever. How long do we trust God? As long as it takes. It's been three and a half years now since Mike Criswell's wife has left him and gone back probably to India and, and into Hinduism and he, all the Eastern religions and all of that. And he continues to believe with all his heart that his God is going to bring his wife back to him. There looks like there's no hope, no way in God's green earth that that's going to happen, but he believes it with all his might. Jesus knows, Jesus sees, and Jesus saves. And therefore, I am just simply learning, and I hope you too, to find comfort and confidence in knowing that He knows. He knows all about you. He knows all about me. He knows all about my friend. And He can, cares deeply. The people of God in this psalm were crying and groaning about the treatment in Egypt during Moses' time. Something's happening in Psalm 23 that they're feeling the same thing. And the Bible says God saw the Israelites and he took and listened to them. And he took notice in Exodus 2.25. And when God met Moses at the burning bush, he said, I have observed the misery of my people in Egypt. And I heard them crying. Believe me, folks, when you are crying out to God, he is hearing you. And so... He's hearing of the oppression of these people. He hears of what we're going through, and he knows about your suffering, as he did with the people in Egypt. If God knew then, don't you think that he knows today about you? And that maybe some of the challenges you're going through are simply because he's simply waiting for you to submit, waiting for you to take time to listen to what he has to share with you. We don't have to say enough. God eventually will say enough. And so I think one of the biggest temptations when we feel overwhelmed is to feel more overwhelmed because we know we should not feel this way. This actually leads us to our stress. And we begin to think that if we had more faith, we shouldn't feel this way. I hope we're encouraged by Elijah's story that as he found his nourishment in God, he was given the strength to go on, even if the solution wasn't there just quite yet. When Jesus went up to what he now, we now call the Mount of Transfiguration, remember that mountain that he took Peter, James, and John up to not long before the Passover? And you know the two people that came alongside of Jesus? Do you know who they were? Elijah and Moses. The two people who struggled, who felt, who threw in the towels that I've had enough. 
the key is like Elijah, like Moses, like King Asa, yeah, Psalm 23, we must remember to look up. One commentary called Psalm 123, the Psalm of the Eyes. And he explained, our eyes are inclined to go down and inward anywhere but to God, to the Lord. And so we must continue to look upward. One of the interesting things about these songs that we're on a journey in, one talks about triumph. Or it starts off with a challenge. We're now starting that second group of three songs. There's challenge and the journey to celebration. So watch as we go to Psalm 124 and 125 and see what happens. I am so glad the Father sent his only begotten Son, Jesus of Nazareth. There is no salvation in any other name other than the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow one day before him, and every tongue one day shall confess his name is holy, whether they want to or not. Jesus, I hope, is everything to you, and I hope he will be everything to me. Whenever I am hungry, Jesus is our bread. Whenever we are lonely, Jesus is our comfort. Whenever we are stressed, Jesus is our peace. Whenever we are downtrodden, Jesus is our joy. Whenever we are weak, Jesus is our strength. Whenever we are afraid, Jesus is our assurance. Whenever we are thirsty, Jesus is our living water. Whenever we are poor, Jesus is our wealth. Whenever we are empty, Jesus is our supply. Whenever storms are tossing, Jesus is our anchor. Whenever unsure, Jesus is our confidence. Whenever we are are hurt, Jesus is our healer. Whenever we are falsely accused, Jesus is our truth. Whenever we are confused, Jesus is our wisdom. Whenever we are endangered, Jesus is our protection. Whenever we are staggering, Jesus is our rock. Whenever we are lost, Jesus is our guidance. Whenever we are restless, Jesus is our trust. Whenever we are broken, Jesus is our repair. Whenever we are tempted, Jesus is our escape. Whenever we are guilty, Jesus is our advocate. Whenever we are overwhelmed, Jesus is our example. Whenever we are in need, Jesus is our help. Whenever we are opposed, Jesus is our courage. Whenever we are in battle, Jesus is our victory. Whenever we are bowed down, Jesus is our hope. Whenever we are bound, Jesus is our deliverer. Whenever we are wounded, Jesus is our saw. When we are searching, Jesus is our desire. Whenever we are singing, Jesus is our song. Whenever we are preaching, Jesus is the message. Whenever we are praying, Jesus is our authority. And whenever we are worshiping, Jesus is our God. So, Father God, Help us in this journey to Passover to, to Easter Sunday be a journey that changes us in so many different ways as you speak into our heart and uh, raise within us a passion to submit ourselves to you as only you can help us do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn as we close today, Revive Us Again. Battery is gone. And my piano turned off. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, for the sun.
to our world in, in the week that may cause us to throw up our hands and say, I've had enough. May the God who is Father prepare your journey. May Jesus the Son guide your footsteps. May the Spirit of life strengthen your body. May the three in one watch over you on every road that you may follow. Love you guys. God bless you. Have a great day.